Hi, welcome back to the Powered by 8 Racing YouTube channel. Today is a special day, and it is special because we finally get all the bits in for the SayDev sequential transmission. Been waiting a long time for this. Uh, we all know what the world's going on right now, so it took a little bit to get here, but it's here. Um, this is a very, very uh, special day because we are going to put everything together. We are now a couple days from the car being done. We can get everything put together and uh, we're gonna plan on putting the, the motor, the torque tube, the transmission and the differential all together and then we'll put it on the car. We might have to adjust the mounts on the car. Uh, we might, it might be just a little bit too long because we went to the C6 stuff and it's a C5 car. We know that the wheelbase is a little bit different. We'll see how it all lines up when it's all put together. Hopefully my measurements are right and we're good, but we might have to uh, make a few adjustments. Now, when you buy the SADEV transmission, it comes with the SADEV, it comes with your AN fittings for your feed lines and your return lines. It comes with a shifter rod, another lever for that. Uh, this is custom size, so it, this piece stays off. This will go in here, you'll weld it on. And then once you get your measurements, that's how that's gonna go together. And then you have your shifter lever with the built-in strain gauge. Uh, the strain gauge allows no lift shifts, so it's pretty much banging gears and you're done. The only time I'm gonna need the clutch is to start and to stop. Um, and obviously with the tilting clutch that we're using, there's no more pulling the car on the trailer. We're gonna be winching that guy in. So anyways, let me uh, get the camera. We'll go and I'll show you some other features of this. Power by your old show. So with the state of transmission, like I said, you get a return line or your feed line and your return line. And so this will go to the oil cooler, transmission cooler, go out, and then it'll return here, have a temp gauge here, and it looks like a drain plug. It has a, um, I believe it has a window somewhere. Uh, maybe it's not on this one, but anyways, it's got your vent port on this side. So we're gonna replace this one um, with a different one. The, they're, so what we have on here is we have a um, built-in strain gauge. It's got your reverse lockout and a gear position um, thing. So that way, when we have it in the car and I'm shifting the gears, the the gear that you're in will display on the MoTeC. I'm gonna put this here to help balance it, and then I can adjust it from there, get it level. My alignment tool goes in and out pretty easily. Hopefully the um, torque tube will go on pretty easily as well. Now you'll see my lines are pretty long on this, but um, I had some extra lines laying around. They'll be fine. Um, I just didn't want to uh, have to buy more lines because these are pretty expensive to not use for something. All right, so let's see, I've got my two lines coming out here, coming out here. This is gonna be the uh, the topmost point needs to be your bleed line, so that's going to be my longer one. And then the other one is going to go uh, to this side here. That's going to go to the firewall, and I have a quick disconnect for it so that if I ever need to remove this again, then it's going to be easy to um, bleed the clutch because everybody knows that bleeding the, the slave on this is not fun. All right, so with that said, I need to get to the car. I need to drop the rear cradle and bring it over here so that we can put the transmission on it with the um, rear diff. And then we'll have one big unit that we can push back underneath the car and shove it in. All right, let's get to it. So I've got to switch this one out for this one. And the reason for that is because this is where the shift lever would be. I can't just throw this bolt on here because of the the transmission itself would be in the way. So I'll just swap it out all the way and um, 
should be good. It can go any way you want it to go. So I'll raise the motor up. We'll get the trans on here. Trans will go there. Slide it back forward because, like I said, the clearance of the cart isn't the best. And that's what we're going to do. All right. So I had to jump ahead. I didn't get footage of it. I had somebody come over to help me and they didn't really want to be famous. So um, we kind of got things together. Didn't miss much, but I'm going to go over what we did while uh, the cameras were off. So as you can see, we've got the drive line together. Um, it's pretty simple because I have that hydraulic cart. And so once I got the transmission mounted here, um, bolted it up, everything went smoothly. And then we, I used my engine hoist to grab the middle of this. And that kind of just the torque tube up, uh, just so we could get everything aligned, everything squeezed together nicely. Um, a couple things that are going to be a problem is that I didn't realize this housing um, for this plate, this housing really needed to be off to get this bottom bolt in. So that's a problem. Uh, what I'm going to do here instead is I'm going to just put a bolt through here and then I'm going to just get a nut and I'm going to come this direction with a nut. That'll hold that on and because um, that was pretty, um, pretty annoying. And then the other thing I'm going to wait till I get on the car is the there's two bolts here that come in through the back. And then but once I'm uh, once I'm on the car, I think once that's in the car, it's going to make things a lot easier. Uh, and then uh, the other thing, uh, again, that I wasn't expecting to happen is the rear torque tube doesn't have a relief hole here for this. So this goes through this hole right here. So the, the shifter bar would come from here and then it would, and then it's going to attach to the lever. Um, but as you can see, there's, it can't go through here because there's no hole on the other side of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the hole saw. I'm going to cut this about where I think it needs to be. Hope that I'm right. You know, my motto, uh, measure once, cut twice. So that's what we're going to do. Hope it's right. If it's not, well, buy a new torque tube. So. All right. So we'll go from there. We'll clean it up some. Uh, it looks like I'm a little high actually. So what we'll do, oh, it'll be all right, but I do need to cut it out more. I did need to come this far back, so that's good, but I am going to have to um, open it up here. Let me show you kind of what's going on here. So kind of see, got a good mark on it. So I think I'm good this direction. I'm going to go ahead and Draw me a little bit of an oval here. Probably make like a teardrop up. I clean that up and I think that we don't have to really, well, I do need to come in here a little bit more. So I'm gonna grind that out right here. I'm good here. So both marks have been perfect. Um, obviously I'll cut these down, make that nice and clear. And um, so yeah, let me get my grinder. I'm gonna need to cut this open more and um, that's what we're going to have to do for that. So you can see here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim this up, trim that up, smooth this all nice out. And then I'm going to open it up to here. And I think we'll be good. Don't think I have to go back this way anymore, but I, if I clear that up, I think then um, it'll be good to go. And then we'll separate it, clean out that bell housing and stuff. Make sure there's no chips on the shafts anywhere. Going to get in the seals and we'll be good to go. All right, let's see what we got now. Where'd I put that rod? OK, 
Okay, so I think I'm to the point. I got a good spot. I need to go ahead and measure it, get it welded up, and then I'll just fine tune that. So I'm not going to clean up until we get this rod measured out. And so I want I want to have adjustment. So I'm going to see this rod is all the way in. So I'm going to figure out how long this is. I'll probably go in about give myself about this much adjustment on both the back and the front and then I'll get it pressed in, weld it up and test it all and then open this up more if I need to. Alright so I got the uh, rod welded and I cleaned everything up, took it apart, cleaned out, now it's back together um, for final assembly. The um, I did use some washers on the inside of this. I didn't like the way it positioned and by spacing it out this way, it keeps it off of where it goes through here. And um, so it's, it's a little bit better, I think. And then this part here. And then once this is on, I'll angle it up just like this. And then what that does is it allows it to clear it also when it shifts back. So we'll get this on and move stuff around a little bit here. This is just held in with a pin and the cotter. All right, so I want this to come out a little bit more because right now this is tilted forward a little bit and I really want it to be um, pretty level. So, spin it out a couple turns. I'll see what that does. A little bit more. And I can take a little bit off of here as well. That's better. All right. So, slip this cotter pin in here. Everything appears to be okay. Um, let me tighten this up and that'll be done. Ready to go in the car. All right. All right, let's see what happens here. I don't know if this is gonna be very easy, but we're gonna give it a try. Problem is, is the cart that the motor is on isn't on a four swivel. It's the casters for it only go straight. So that's what's going to make it the most difficult to do. Oh, actually, you know what I'm going to do first? I'm going to get it to right about here. All right, so where we leave off, I uh, was pushing the uh, drivetrain under the car and get everything lined up. Just had to kind of move it around a little bit here and there. It was difficult to run back and forth, grab the camera, to line that up, grab the camera, line it up. It just got too much. I just couldn't keep up with it. So um, I went ahead and just finished it up, got everything bolted down, and I will go over what I ended up doing uh, when the camera was off. So obviously the car is on the ground now. I put the shifter back on. So there's gonna be the shifter there goes right to the stock location. I still have my stock cover. I'm gonna try to put it on there. And if not, I'll probably get like a boot made or something. Just kind of dress it up. Um, it is a sequential, so back and forward are our movements. Um, there is a built-in strain gauge like we talked about. So that's gonna get hooked up to the MoTeC. And uh, let me lift the car up and I'll show you under the car kind of what needed to happen to get the C6 cradles to work, at least for me. Um, I, you know, I don't know what everybody else's stuff would do. So let me get this car in the air. All right, with the car in the air, um, let me show you what we did. So the, really the only thing that needs to happen, and uh, I did it a little bit different and I shouldn't have done it the way I did it. So I'm gonna redo it. I have another cradle coming. Uh, but basically, 
this cradle sits forward. Let me. So this cradle sits more forward here. So our points here didn't exactly line up. So I kind of made some space to slide it forward. But um, so I'm going to put the tires on, see how it works. But, you know, I've already cut out this, which we're going to do another video on the other side. But um, because I need a tire clearance, my tire now, uh, because of the C6 stuff, sits about maybe an inch from, from that. So with this being here, it just didn't work. So I cut it open to make it work all the way up there, had to be cut to, to fit the big tires. And, um, but now that this is forward a little bit more, uh, I mean, it's probably about a quarter inch more forward. So, um, yeah, I, I, I think once I get that new cradle, I'm going to see if I like it. Um, because if not, I'm going to open this up a little bit. Uh, I'll have to drink, take this all down and this will all slide forward. Well, the cradle will slide back uh, to its stock location versus the cradle being more forward. So, um, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do yet. Uh, once I get there, I'll, I'll cross that path. So that's pretty much it. Um, you can see there's the sequential stuffed up in there. It's nice and pretty. Um, I have my temp sensor here. Uh, you can see the breathers up top there, that little blue knob. I'll hook up my uh, return line here uh, and then feed line here. And that's the pump that's in this um, right here is the pump for that. So those are those hoses I made in the other video. The, um, and then the diff will be here. Um, and then there's one on top right or uh, right here and that's the one for the um the this is the return this is the feed so well i guess that's return and that's yeah whatever um yeah so that pretty much is it for the diff um i don't have my cover on this yet so you can kind of see up in here uh you can see the tilt and slave up in there uh, with the tilt and clutch, the oil filters here. So that's going to make nice, easy oil changes again. Don't worry. I've already made sure that's clear of everything. Um, tighten up some hoses and get the motor and stuff back together. Oh, I need to take the bumper off. Um, I'm going to put a different, uh, toe strap here. I'm not going to use the cloth one anymore. It, it just became too big of a pain in the butt to deal with that cloth one. I'm going to just stick a, uh, my fad one back on there and, um, and it's metal. So it's just a little bit easier to do. So yeah, I'm going to, I guess that'll be the end of this video here. Actually, I'll pull, I'll throw some bonus footage. I'm going to lower the car back down. I'm going to get all the hoses hooked up and, uh, we'll just do that. Maybe time lapse or something. I don't know. All right, I'm just gonna end this video. Um, I gotta play it through it, play it out a little bit here. So, um, sequential is done. If I filled the car up with fluid right now, I could start it. Uh, I still need a tune, so um, get that going on Monday, Tuesday, sometime this week coming up. And now I'm gonna try to get it into a rolling status so I can get the exhaust made up. The um, bumper's kind of on it and just kind of hanging around and I uh, got that hood that we're going to talk about later on and so still got some work to do but um, hey be sure to like subscribe share and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Power by your old show.